This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Yeah. So, so morning we saw that uh, state mission. Uh, we'll see now. RE framework. Okay. Basically, uh, RE framework. We'll see now. So this is a very important thing because. Uh, why it is a very important because the before the RE framework, most of the people they developed in the normal without RE framework using the uh, using the like a sequence or flowchart normal kind of thing or state mission also. Okay, so there's no RE RE framework is a basically it's not a, a new thing. It is a template, just template. Okay, it's a template. Okay, normally we're downloading the templates, right? So suppose for example. Uh, testing uh, six years background uh, uh, resume templates, right? So it's, uh, downloading the templates. So template in the sense, the template has uh, something already prepared, okay? So we're just taking that and we're modifying uh, based on our needs, like uh, so our phone number will change in that CV, okay? So our names, our experience, our companies, everything will change. But actually, so we're taking the one templates, basically. So this RE framework is also a, a template so last um, uh, Lakshmi madam uh, example we saw right that the performer so do you all observe so how much easy it is see we didn't change anything any place so we taken the RE framework on that day uh, we changed just to the Q name in the config and go and process only so this this is a C so uh, almost most of the work they already done RE framework, they already done the most of the work. The thing is, so this is having the some rules. So rules, okay. This ha have the rules, those, those rules, they said, so write this type of code in the particular workflow, uh, do this type of code in the particular, they, they said some rules, okay. So you can follow or not follow, not a problem, okay. That is a rules, just rules, okay. It's like a, uh traffic signal traffic rules kind of things okay basically it's a it's a, it's a template and they already take care of a lot of things it's a, just a template first of all the template so if they ask any questions so into questions what is the RE framework it is a predefined template that mean template which already have a uh, handle the exception handling they handle all the exception handling So they take care of the exception handling. We don't need to bother about the exception handling. They take care of the log mechanism, logging. They take care of the queues, okay, queues. So, so there, there's a, by default, the RE framework uh, come with a default. Default, it is coming with the queue mechanism. So if you want to change, you can change. So there is a transaction item, transaction item there's a transaction item in the sense so c individual item is called as transaction you know suppose, suppose for example you have a mailbox that has an individual mail is a one transaction so if you have a lot of files so individual files if file path is a one transaction so you have a um, some customer records individual customer is a one transaction you have a lot of invoices each invoice is a one transaction so this invoice details you can keep into the queue so if you keep into the queue, so no need to change anywhere in the RE framework because it's already uh, by default it is coming with the all the queue process. So you can change. Okay, they will ask like, so can we change the? Can we use the RE framework without using the queues? It is possible. It is possible. A transaction item is maybe may a data row. Okay, a transaction item may be a string from the list. Okay, so you have a list of so. The files in the uh, an array or list so single string is a single item is a one transaction item so you can have a like that so the dictionary list of dictionaries uh, collection is there one dictionary is a one, one one transaction item you can you can have you can change so when you can change okay and also what i feel in the re framework this is like a i feel like a some uh Okay, so I can say so electronic circuit kind of thing. So circuit, if you know the circuit properly, so where the uh, 
power goes from which location to which location when it will go so the wires and all the connections basically wires and all means connections if you know clearly <coughs> you can change as per your requirement right so if the person so just imagine there is a two persons two persons so very very important re framework there is a two person person a and uh, person b there is a two types of persons in the uh, rpa ui path uh, developers okay so maximum i can say out of 10 rpa developers so what i'm saying the 10 rpa developers means uh, the people who are now working in the rpa okay it's not like a learning and seeking for the job okay the 10 people who are working average out of 10 people who are working in the rpa ui path so i can say eight out of out of 10 eight they don't understand the rpa uh, re framework they don't understand the re framework okay so only two they can understand averagely i'm saying the numbers may differ but averagely so based on my experience my contacts but what i mean by my um, what i see in, in the in the organizations multiple organizations what i uh, i can say like this out of 10 people 10 rpa developers who are working in the ui path uh two are no two people know perfectly are that the circuit okay re framework circuit so the person who know re framework circuit can change anytime can change so because he know can can add the new state can remove the new another state can modify right so he can know so how the flow so what is the logic so where from where it is uh, coming and these things all the flow basically the flow you have to understand the flow so okay the person a that eight people they don't know about the how the flow is executing they can take and they they are very afraid of changing the re framework default re framework okay so they are just taking and uh, using so okay i'm just uh, expecting all of you at the end of this uh, session or uh, after completing the re framework so these masters in re framework okay so that's why please listen carefully whenever you have a doubts just stop me and ask me okay so i want i want you to i mean uh i mean yeah you should you should clear about each and every topic in the re framework the flow how the flow is executing okay now coming coming to the points okay and the way i am explaining that is the importance of the re framework that is uh, in, the, in the market there is a lot of demand re framework okay because the people maybe the interviewer don't know okay they can just simply ask okay that kind of situations i i i saw okay it's not a joke actually so it's a uh, see so a lot of people you can observe so a lot of people they don't know re framework they can just uh, normal things they can just uh, simply say so there is a three four states are there then uh, top level i don't want you to become a top level it's a it's a in-depth go to the in-depth of the each and every state and you should tell okay so you should tell like a each state what all the things are there so the whole re framework should be inside your mind okay so which state uh, goes to the uh, from from which state to which state in which situation and each state each and every activity because it is a default framework if you remember one time that is enough because right okay if you remember one one time so okay let's let's go to the this is a simple template and they take care of the exception handling they take care of the logging mechanism by default it is a queue mechanism by default it come up with the state mission okay so state mission it is a built on top of the state mission so now let us go to the uh, one how the re framework how RE framework has a state mission right state mission means it has a states let us go and check the states so first initially there is a one state first state that is a call init state if you have already uh, my request is if you all already have a uh, something uh, that mean don't mix the uh, i mean what you, what you learn already previously this re framework and uh, uh, i'm asking you to come with the empty minds okay so this will really it is easy okay if you come with the empty minds uh, uh, I, I will make you okay so exports in the re framework okay let's uh we have a single state so if i say single state forget about the four states okay some people they uh, in the minds there is a four states these things and all forget about the, all the states okay we will go from the scratch okay there is a one state is the state state mission has a states right one state is there that is a 
any state they call it as any state you can ch uh, change the name so each state has uh, their own purpose the first state has uh, their own purpose the purpose of the end state is uh, initializing that so what are, what are all there inside the init state so first of all first of all there is a, there is a, some variables are there we'll keep the variables here 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 this side variables the variables is like a system error this error is a one variable <laughs> morning i saw morning we speak in the app error exception right app exception that is a variable that is a system er error variable okay so like that so we have a variable called system error okay system error is a one variable so what we are doing so morning we saw uh the making that is equal to nothing so how much powerful that right system error is equal to nothing okay initially we are making that as a nothing first first in the init state in the state first we are making that as a nothing once we are making that nothing so so and also as i said here exception handling they take care of the all the exception handling so they already um have a try and catch uh, mechanism in each state okay in each state they they already have a try and catch mechanism the exception handling mechanism okay so we are uh, uh, the, all the things are there in the try block this whatever i am explaining here in the try block inside the init state so first we take in the system error equal to nothing uh, the immediately so there is a one more variable called config the config is basically a uh, dictionary so config is basically a dictionary so to take to to just keep the the uh, values like a so change may change tomorrow these values and all we will we are keeping it the config dictionary that is a basically the config dictionary is a key value pair config is like a key config is a one variable that is a dictionary variable that is a string and object type okay so basically you can make is a string string but why they make as an object type so the value may be a integer may be a string may be a boolean right so this config dictionary so apart from this there is a config dot xlsx is there xlsx is there so where is that so oh, parallel we can we should know about the uh, folder structure okay so there is a data folder and the data folder there is a config got it there is a data folder and a data folder there is a config okay so let's uh, take a one more paint we'll see here there is the data folder here data folder and data folder there is a config dot xlsx okay this is a one thing we have to understand this data is a basically a uh, a folder okay a folder under that there is a one config dot xlsx okay data folder under data where, where is the config file so the question is where is the config dot xlsx this is there in the under data folder so what is the config basically the config is a uh, config excel has the uh, three sheets three sheets okay settings constants this is a one simple excel file which has the three sheets assets okay so settings settings uh, constants and assets so this this structure is a, it has a three columns so what is the name comma value and description just imagine this same structure is repeats here if it's here okay name and key so this description is uh, just to understand while you are seeing the excel file so i'm just removing the description part it is a just if we're not using inside the program to just understand what is uh, this key for okay to understand so while you are um, handovering your code to the another persons the the production persons they can see by seeing the description they can understand oh this key is for uh, that particular purpose okay though you're just uh, uh, in, in the excel only okay in the excel only not uh, using inside the program okay so these two there's there's a three sheets how many sheets are there in the config dot xlsx there is a three sheets in the config there is a three sheets uh first two sheets settings and constants how it looks like there is a three two columns imagine there are two three columns are there 
the same as in two columns. So name and value is there. Name is a key, value is a value. Name is a key. So last time we saw, so if you want to keep any values which may change in future, okay, or you, you want to use in multiple places. So if you want to change the same value in one shot, so instead of uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, maybe in future, it, the value may change. Uh, to keep that kind of value, so you can uh, keep into the settings and constants. So in the settings, the settings kind of things uh, like a mm, queue names, okay, names or uh, some database connections, these things and all you are keeping here. And uh, uh, here is a constant like a file paths. Okay, both are same. Both are same. You, if you keep in any place, not a problem. Okay, because so at the end. It will combine into the config dictionary. Okay, so if you keep in the settings, uh, constants, there's no problem. You just uh, normally you are just uh, changing to the all the settings like a call queue names or uh, what is a project name. These things are all inside the settings and uh, constants having the file path and what is a so file paths and uh, so suppose for example uh, error email error uh, error email to address suppose if you ha want to change the two address tomorrow today is the two address your development address you are giving so tomorrow the production uh, main uh, address say you are giving right your two address so you, you, these things and all two address subjects email body subject these things and all you are keeping into the this um, constants so the assets the settings and constants is uh, looks like the same name and value the assets is like a not a name and value name and asset name okay so asset name so what will happen so there is a uh, another 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 folder called framework okay framework this framework is a one folder this folder has a lot of predefined xaml files they already have there is a rules so they gave us some rules we have to follow that rules so see first one is a init all settings dot xaml okay so there is a one uh, xaml file or one workflow is called init all settings now init all settings ha having the code to combine this also see there is a config dictionary is there config dictionary this is a config dictionary there's a dictionary variable so and uh, this has the uh, this config excel is there so basically what it will do this config excel has the uh, this config excel has the uh, three sheets okay this is a config dictionary just imagine this bold color is a config dictionary. This is a config dictionary. And what basically it will do, so this this uh, init all settings will take a input, input is a config Excel, and it will give the output as a config dictionary. So basically it will fill all the values from the Excel one shot. So, so you can have, you're keeping the values in the Excel, that is fine. So whenever you want, you can go and take the value from the excel that is not good approach right so whenever you want in the program middle you want the url so directly you can connect to the uh, excel and read cell activity you can read the cell these things and all it is not good approach right sometimes it will it, it, uh, uh, give a big big problem with the performance wise okay sometimes in the uh, maybe the um, excel may crash or Excel is not responding every time you are, you are not uh, in dealing with the physical files, right? So basically, you can see here there is a RAM and HDD hard disk, right? So Excel file is there here, config, config Excel SX. It is there in the your hard disk. So if you switch off the your laptop and open tomorrow, so the Excel is uh, still remains same, right? It is there in the same location. But the RAM it is a config dictionary. It is a config dictionary is there a config variable okay basically what in any tall settings is doing the hard it is acting to us a config physical file reading the physical file all the sheets sheet setting sheet constant sheet and this name is a key and value is a uh, value is a value so it's like a string comma 
objects. So this this is a this this config is in the RAM. This config is in the RAM. So got it. This is a config is in the uh, basically this config is in the RAM in the sense it is a primary memory. But I mean uh, wherever the logic is building, it is a temporary memory only. So where the logic is built. So basically, init all settings is doing that physical Excel file all the values and push into the one object, the config object. So whenever the program throughout the program, whenever we need, instead of we go directly to the config.xlsx, we are dealing with the object which is there in the memory, in memory. Okay, config is an in memory object. Okay, got it. So it is very easy and fast to retrieve the values from the in memory. Uh, that's why so this init all settings the duty of the init all settings and also i'm saying each and every xaml file and each and every state has their own purpose their own job okay so there is a duty okay init also what is the duty of the init all settings blindly it is the only duty only particular duty it is just if you call just go and read the excel and fill the information of the config in dictionary in the memory that's it so what about the settings and constants? It, this is a uh, looks good. So it is a key and value pair. And what about the assets? Assets is basically instead of uh, mm, this key, the key is this one. Key is a name and value is asset name. So what what it will do? Uh, orchestrator asset. It has a values, right? Orchestrator is asset. So basically, this will take the asset name from the config uh, XAML and go and connect to the orchestrator asset, get the value, get the written value, and uh, assign the value here, okay? Assign the value here. Value. So basically the value, so on that time, so the settings on constants is a key value, name is a key and value is a value, right? In the config dictionary, in key and value. So key and value, so but the assets, so in the asset sheet, so it will read the asset sheet, and key, uh, for that key, the asset it is not assigning the assets it's going and searching the value for that particular asset in the orchestrator and take that value and assign to the this config dictionary in your records okay so after after the init all settings so 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 basically in the, in the assets in the uh, see uh, in, in the asset sheets it will read the asset sheets by using the read range and it is a key and asset. So the name and asset, the name, uh, it, it will take the asset name by using the for each row activity, take the asset name, okay? And that asset name by using the get asset. So what, what we will use to get the asset value? So we'll use the get asset, right? Get asset, go and uh, go to the orchestrator asset and get the value and assign to the variable. Suppose if you just say like a, hmm, email 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 equal to email is a key equal to uh, asset name is equal to you email so in asset there is a uh, asset called asset called you email mail equal to something like that xxxxx dread gmail.com okay okay so what what the unit all settings will do uh, read the asset this will come the key key is a email and value this will go and connect to the this will go and connect to the this asset and take this value take this value and assign to this one okay that means config has a config config of email means it will give the asset name called xxxx at the gmail.com okay okay got it this is a basically uh, the assets okay the purpose of the init all settings the purpose of the init all settings this will take the input as a excel config excel and the output as a config dictionary so at the after calling the output before before into all settings the config is a nothing empty after uh, in all settings the config is having a something it has a, some values okay let's go to here First, it will check the if the if if config is is nothing is the if condition. If it is a nothing, then it will call in it 
all settings.xaml okay and if it's not nothing so it won't call the init all settings.xaml so because so see so first time so config is empty right there's no there's no values so what is the init also once you call the init also settings what is the here here the values are config having the some values config having the some values some it, it's loaded the all the key value pairs from the config.xml to xls to config dictionary so after that there is a here there is another uh, thing called another value called init kill all process dot xaml okay there is another workflow call kill all process okay i think you understand this one right let's move to here okay so there is another workflow called we'll keep here kill all process there is nothing is there nothing is there in the kill all process okay it is an empty xaml file there is some empty xaml files are there they said so you have to kill some processes right suppose your workflow is uh, dealing with the excel or uh, sharepoint or the chrome so before starting your process it is better best practice is uh, cleaning the environment cleaning the environment when it says the process is interacting with the suppose the process is interacting with the uh, sap or exe or uh, chrome dot exe okay exe chrome application or excel or exe so if you want to if, if the our process is dealing with this uh, going to work on these applications it is better to kill the process first time okay Kill the XAML, so the XL, 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 Chrome, and SAP. So this will change. Okay. So if you want to kill any process, you can use a kill process, right? Kill process activity. Uh, there is a kill process activity is there. So what I'm saying is, in the kill process activity, uh, in the kill process activity. So don't write this kill kill kind of work and all in anywhere. So write that type of code in the kill all process dot xaml. Got it? They said that write this type of code. You want to kill you want to kill the processes before going to start the any process, right? So write down the whatever whatever the applications you want to kill. All the code, whatever the uh, the kill uh, Excel, kill Word, kill uh, SAP. These are all the things, all the type of work, work that uh, write into the kill all process dot xaml. By default, it is empty. By default, it is empty. So what we are doing, so we're just making that, um, killing the pro processes to make a clean environment. Sometimes uh, uh, before before running the pro process, before running the robot, the robot schedules every every day uh, afternoon two two o'clock. So before two o'clock, so one o'clock, someone opened the Excel, he forgot to close. Okay, it is disturbing that uh, robot to work on that Excel, right? So if you kill the process, so then freshly you can work. The robot will work. That's why we're doing the kill process uh, on that inside the uh, one-time if condition. Okay. Next one is a uh, clo init all application. Init all applications. Not XAML. Okay. There is a uh, there is a different type of XAMLs out there. Init all settings. So this is also you can say it is an empty XAML. Okay. Init all applications empty xaml so what type of code we have to write here it is empty xaml they gave the empty xaml okay there is no code here inside the unit also applications okay uh what type of code we have to write so if you want to interact with the c if you want to interact with this excel let's forget about the excel okay suppose you are dealing with the some um uat uh uti uh website okay you know, so some UTI website you have to log in and keep keep the process. So you have to do some process, but before that, so you're just opening the Excel, uh, opening the SAP. So you're dealing with the SAP also, okay? Uh, SAP opening, SAP application, and or login, SAP application. Okay, this type of code and all. Okay. Anyway, if you want to interact with the SAP applications, you have to open first of all. You have to log in if you have a credential, uh, uh, some authentication level pro projects. Uh, the, the pages okay so you have anyway so write that type of code in the init all applications they are saying that write 
wherever you are opening the not excel excel is a excel word these things are all uh, on that time you are using and closing okay any applications any web applications or windows applications <clears throat> okay let's see without ex is a windows application okay suppose there is a invoice invoice manager uh, dot application is there application is there so if you want to open the in this invoice dot uh, invoice manager dot application so write down the code to open and keep it open on that type of application that type of code opening the application login these things are all in the uh, init all applications okay basically open applications and login uh, login to applications right websites any application when i say application it is like a windows application windows application or web application anything okay so here uh, kill process kill any uh, uh, processes before start process uh, project process okay so basically you can kill the excel or chrome or sap.exe any type of etc so whatever you are, don't kill all the applications because so whatever you are using inside your project so only take care of that uh, uh, applications killing the process okay next one is so, so this is a this will open the any to all applications and uh, this everything see everything is uh, uh, having the try and catch is a try there is a try There's a try and catch, right? Inside the try. This is everything is there in the inside the try, right? Try and there is a catch here. Here close catch. So inside the catch, inside the catch, inside the catch, system error equal to exception. Okay. So as it is a uh, as it is uh, having the try and catch, everything is in the try and catch. If any exception occurred while it is interacting with the init all application, init all settings. Suppose you if you are dealing with init all settings, so the Excel is open because it is using the workbook activities. Okay, so if the Excel is open, so it will throw the exception like a Excel is already used by someone as uh, someone as a process. Okay, so it is not able to access. So it will throw the exception in the init all settings. Then it will go to the catch block and the catch block. What is the code in the catch block? Just simple one as an operator system error equal to exception. Okay, so do you all understand this init uh, state? Okay. System error equal to exception means so in the catch block you can find the exception right in the catch block if you type the uh, uh, if you just uh, add any exception so it will give the some exception uh, variable there is exception variable will give right so that is the US filling the exception basically filling the exception okay and uh, next one uh this is the first state so we'll how many how many types of uh, how many activities are there in the state mission so how many type of activities are there just ping in the chat window how many type of activities are there in the state mission type of activities not blocks two activities what are that activities what are that activities state and final state perfect others also has to respond please okay this is a final state this is a final final state okay so this is a init is a state this is a uh, end process you can just call it as end process okay this is a end process end process basically this this is a final state this is a state and this is a final state okay so if any exception occurred if any exception occurred that mean if any system exception occurred system error is nothing some something like a while you are opening the application suppose for example uh, what what we discussed so login mechanism also we have to write right so while you are logging to the uat application something exception the log login is properly done this is all if the the if, if the login is not properly done so you should not proceed further right that kind of, kind of things are there 
then immediately it will go to the end process so what is this this is a system error error is not nothing okay something like that it has a something this is a having the something got it a system error is not nothing this is a transition transition is like they from the init state to the end process one transition is gone so what is the transition if the system error is not nothing that means a while you it is dealing with the init all application init all settings or kill all processes or any all applications so any exception occurred then it will go to the cache block and the cache block uh, the system error is a uh, filling okay it is a filling system error has a something initially we are making the system error equal to nothing okay so what is there in the end process end process again there is a try and catch try and here close all applications there's another applications dot xml okay those are all applications dot xml in the catch block in the catch block they call they call like a kill all process dot okay so anyway kill all processes uh, we understand right we are killing the processes in the same way so first it is in the every as i said every stage is uh, sir, having the exception handled already we are not taking care of the anything so whatever I, we are discuss, discussing up to now and going forward it is not about we are writing the code please listen here okay we are not going to write any code they already written the code we have to understand okay what is the variable which variables they are using okay if you if you understand so it is very easy to operate okay so how, how they uh, done so there is another another uh, place another example is what is that close all applications same here. okay there is a different kind of things are there closing application and killing the process Closing the application. Suppose, for example, you, you have a, a word. This is a uh, notepad, right? So closing means you can go and click on the exit. This is a proper close. Okay, or you can click on the into mark. This is a closing. This is a closing, right? This is a closing. Or let's take a on Excel. Excel is there, right? This is Excel is there. So you can close by the directly. Excel is there. You can close directly by pressing this one into mark. That's a close. You can see the uh, tooltip and or go to the file and click on the close here. This is a proper close. That type of code you are dealing, you, you are writing here. Okay. Closing all applications. So like a SAP, you are calling the SAP close or a Chrome application or website. The website. If you if you if you log in already, you have to log out, right? That is a that is a closing. Log, uh, log out and close. Okay, log out. So so if you uh, if you already log into the some site, so the proper close is a close log out the website and close the website. So that is a proper close that type of code okay attaching to that particular website and uh, log out the process uh, log out the log out means so you just click on the log out button and it will log out automatically and close uh, there is a closed tab activities there it will, you can close our close window is also there right so this is a close in the applications closing is different and the killing is different don't confuse uh, between these two closing and killing closing means this is a proper close killing means wherever it is whether it is a saved or not or it won't bother okay if you say here see i may not save here i may not save here suppose for example uh, testing something like that if it close it will ask the, you want to save or not okay this is a proper close so suppose uh, it is not saved i just uh, uh, something written here if you just go to the excel uh, process and click in in task Click on that task. It it is closed. That means it is a kill the process. Killing is different. That type of code we are writing in the kill all processes. Closing all applications is a proper closing. That is a there in the end process. The first thing is a only single activity is there. Closing killing process is a closing completely instance right. 
those in complete instance. And if you have a if you have a uh, Chrome, suppose for example Chrome, see Chrome, Google, Facebook, Gmail, Yahoo, Finance. Okay, so how many how many tabs I open? See Facebook, Gmail, right? Yahoo. There is a lot of uh, uh, Anup, you ask like a killing process is a closing completely instance, uh, right? Right? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. So, see, killing means suppose I want to close only the uh, Google, Google only, not the Facebook or not the Gmail or not Yahoo. So that is a closing, closing properly whatever you require. But the killing, the four websites are open. If I kill Excel, uh, suppose if I kill like a uh, command prompt, if I kill like a task kill slash I am Chrome dot exe task kill hyphen I am Chrome dot exe. See, it's closed the entire thing. Where is the where is the Chrome? Chrome has opened. Chrome Chrome has a lot of uh, applications to be open, right? That is a killing the process at the end. If the closing also happened, uh, uh, showing the problem, you can kill. Yeah, no. No, that, that is no, 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 no. That was something uh, I was just saying. Same, same thing actually. To close the completely, okay, okay. Uh, the object will be closed completely. Ah, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Object in from the memory, it is closing completely. Yeah, you are correct. Right. Okay. Okay. So closing, closing all applications. So what are all the code we have to write in the close all applications activity? Uh, Zander, we have to write the code like a logout. Uh, logout. If you have a logout for your applications, you can just uh, perform that kind of logout thing in the close all applications. Or uh, if you want to, if you have the code for uh, close up website so you can write down the code for close tab these things and all if any exception occurred while it is closing okay while it is closing any exception occurred okay so then uh, it will go for the kill process got it sometimes if you close so it will show so do you want to close all the tabs or a single tab or a current tab that, that kind of uh, things uh, it will show sometimes right so if any exception any exception occurred while it is closing all the applications again the kill process will uh, call and the kill process it will kill the actual process from that uh, thing okay so do you understand up to this any doubts any turn the end process that's it end process only two close all applications and if any exception occurred in the catch block there is a kill process it also very very few three okay if a config is nothing it will check if the config is nothing first time that means in this if condition will run only one time one time okay uh, we will see so what is the one time and all later okay so you need all applications you need all settings kill all processes do you, do you have any questions just just type no if you uh, if you don't have a questions or everything is clear The next one is uh, so the next one is uh, yeah. uh, all state have try here you show try catch where is finally final block if you just drag the try and catch the finally block is there they are not doing anything here okay okay in the end process okay. they did they in the final block nothing okay in the here also in the init mm -hmm. block the final block is empty Okay. Okay. That's good. Good. One. Good question. But yeah. So the final block does not have any code in the init init state and uh, end state. The final block does not have any code. Okay. Okay. So okay now. So if the, this one, this one is uh, like a if the system uh, exception. This is like a. Uh, another another transition is there transition from the init state there is a two transitions from the init state so one is a uh, if the system error is not, not nothing and if the system error is nothing so suppose this is like a if the system error is system error is nothing that means 
there is no errors the prime block executed properly and that is a uh, this page okay the system error is nothing uh, everything is working fine in the init state uh, it is not go to the catch block it will go to the next state the next state is called get transaction state is nothing okay system error is nothing that is uh, everything is uh, uh, good actually everything is good proper okay what is this state this state name is a uh, uh, get transaction state. get transaction state this is like a state name so in this get transaction state first thing it will just check uh, should stop or not should stop there is a should stop activity is there what is the should stop activity this will listen to the orchestrator this will this activity will listen to the orchestrator if while the process is running if anyone click on the stop button or not okay if anyone click on the stop button or not suppose for example uh, you know, yeah, these are all the data let us uh, one, two, three. Suppose so, so every every transaction. Suppose every transaction. First thing, first thing in the get transaction data, get transaction state. The first thing is should stop activity. What is the should stop activity? The should stop activity will check. And that particular time, it will check is there any stop signal come from the orchestrator or not. In the orchestrator, while the job is running, it will if anyone click on the stop button of that particular job, this should stop activity will return the true. If the stop button is not clicked, this will return the false. There's a simple activity called should stop activity. This will return the true or false. If anyone click on that particular time, okay that particular time whenever the executions come to that particular place so anyone click on the uh, stop button so it will check, check uh, tell that uh, true or false okay okay now so if condition if it's a true block true block if there's a true and other false block just imagine this is a false block there's if condition if the, if the should stop if should stop okay if it should stop is true some somebody they click it on the stop button then there is a one one more variable called transaction item okay transaction item one very variable, variable called transaction item. what is the transaction item the transaction item by default it is a queue item the transaction item by default it is a queue item Okay, if you want to change, you can change. That's what here we discussed. Default queue item. Okay, transaction item is a default. It is a queue item. Queue item. So if you want to change to the data data row or a string or int anything, you can change. Okay, by default, what is that? So that is another question in the interview. So what is a by default? What type of transaction item? What is the the type of the transaction item variable? Uh, by default in the RE framework, that is a queue item. It's not queue. Queue item is a one data type. Okay, what is it? Queue item. Okay, queue item. Okay. Uh, uh, if it is a true, someone clicked the true. That means someone someone clicked the stop button from the orchestrator uh, jobs page. So the should stop will return the true. That means so here there is a one code uh, one one single assign operator like a transaction item is equal to nothing okay transaction item equal to nothing okay transaction item equal to nothing and uh, this will go here so basically why they click so they are just saying that stop the process okay stop the process okay so here also the condition is a uh, transaction item is nothing okay. if it is is nothing this will this will just uh, uh, okay this is like a yellow color or, uh, 
it's a, so, so something like that they just uh, forcefully click on the transaction item okay uh, that means stop button should stop stop button the should stop lizards and it is going to the true transaction item is equal to nothing then it will go to the end process once it is going to the end process what is there so it will close all applications and uh, uh, stop the it is the end point in it is a start point so, uh, end process end point there is no uh, so uh, so uh, just being in the chart window will we have a transaction can we have a transaction so going transactions to the end process uh, final state can we have the transactions in the final state no right we don't have yes so swarna madam you're saying yes why we have a transaction uh, transactions to the final uh, that means end process End process. Uh, yeah, I mean, for final state. So, Arna, madam, you said yes. Why? Why? What is the reason why you said yes? No, actually, yes is there already in the typing mode. It just came out just like that. Sorry. Yes is there already in the messages, and it it came just like that. Um, it's accidental. It's a no only, right? Yeah, yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. Right, yeah. right, yeah. You're saying okay. Okay, fine. Mm. Now, uh, in the in the should stop activity, it will listen to the orchestrator, and uh, it, if it is true, it will uh, assign a transaction item equal to nothing. And uh, there is a there is a transition. How many transactions are there now in the get transaction state? One transition. Okay, that is connected to the end process. So when it will go to the end process, if the transaction transaction item equal to nothing, that's it. Okay, next false false block. Uh, block. We'll see. This is a this is a uh, true block and false block. False block. In the false block, what is there? So this will call the. This will call, get, yeah, transaction data dot xaml. Okay, there is another XAML call get transaction data. Is that get transfer? Let's uh, go and add to, add to our application get transaction data. Okay, so what is there in the get transaction data? This is a, this is the way there is a duty of get transaction data. It will get the new queue item and fill the transaction item. Okay, transaction item is a queue item, right? It will go and connect to the orchestrator. Okay, and uh, uh, I feel like it is a, the duty of this one is a so filling uh, taking the new item right? take take new item from or or get queue item or transaction item you can say okay from the queue orchestrator queue orchestrator queue and fill assign to transaction item variable okay the transaction item variable is already a queue item right so it will get uh, go and uh, uh, select that uh, queue item so basically how can we uh, get the item from the queue so what is the activity to get the item from the queue new item from the queue in the chart window so we can use a item from the queue by using the get transaction item activity right get transaction item so by using the get transaction that code get transaction item these things are all there in the get transaction data and not only that in the get transaction data so this the purpose of this is uh, the purpose of get transaction data is taking the new transaction today it is a queue item right so no need to change any anything in the get transaction data so tomorrow if it is a a row data row, a data row is a data row is a transaction item then you have to change the where you have to change for taking the single single item this is a single transaction it will take the purpose of the get transaction data that xaml is taking the single transaction item okay. whether it is a transaction is on the uh, mail single mail from the mailbox or single file in the file list okay or the queue and a new queue item from the Queues or a data row from the data table. So where we have to write tomorrow if you want to change the code. So the code in the sense instead of queue items, you want to take the uh, uh, take the single uh, file path. 
where we have to change we have to change the code in the get transaction method. They, they already have a code they already have a code so what is there the code is like a this init all settings is having the code okay this having the code is there got it so again one more thing is a they already have the code okay so if you want to change you can change this get all transaction have the code oh, got it so remain things any kill all processor does not have a code got it kill all processor does not have a code uh, close all applications does not have a code any all applications does not have a code you have to write if you want to write okay so this default uh, the code is there inside the application uh, inside the xamels we need to all applicable all settings and get transaction data so let us go to here uh, once it is get transaction data again here there's a try and catch right it's not fully fully try and catch here is a only in the false block only in the false block try and catch okay Got it. So what happened here in the false block? So in the try block, we are keeping the get transaction item. Or after get transaction item, in the transaction item is filled. So how the init all settings before calling the init all settings? So this is the init all settings, right? This init all settings so before calling the init all settings, the config is empty. After calling the init all settings, the config has a something, right? in the same way uh, before calling the get transaction data the transaction item is uh, nothing so after calling the transaction uh, get transaction data the transaction item has something some transaction you, you understand the transaction means one record one item one mm, this is the one transaction this is the one transaction right so okay so this record is there just imagine okay if the while it is retrieving the transaction suppose uh, in the get transaction data there is a code to get the mm, data from the orchestrator suppose for example the connection is lost internet connection is lost so it is not able to connect to the orchestrator what will happen while you are using the get transaction date item so the internet connection is lost the connection between the orchestrator and your robot is lost what will happen just ping in the chat window what will happen on that time exception occurred right there is an exception occurred so if the exception occurred where it where it will go it will go to the catch block in the cache blocks, what what is another uh, uh, code? The transaction item is equal to nothing. So in the, in the true block, by default, where transaction item is nothing, in the false block, while we are getting the transaction item, so if if uh, transaction item equal to nothing, um, then again the transaction item equal to nothing. What is the next state? In the get transaction state, if the transaction item is equal to nothing, while it is returning, see here in this place. In this place, uh, error occurred. Just ping in the chart window, please. Okay. In this place, the, uh, there is a, some exception while it is retrieving get transaction data. A transaction item is equal to nothing. Uh, that means yes, uh, something happens. There's some exception occurred. So it will go to the catch block. A catch block we gave the single assign operator assign activity by just assigning the transaction item equal to nothing. If the transaction item is equal to nothing in the get transaction state what is the immediate state uh, end process yeah. end process end the process end process perfect okay so where it will go in this situation it will go to the end process how many ways it will go to the end process if the should stop is a true it will go to the end process if the if the while it should stop is a false no no one clicked on the stop button in the orchestrator but while it is getting the uh, getting the uh, data uh, from the orchestrator or while, it, while calling the get transaction data it has uh, some exception so then that time also it will go to the end process the another thing that there is a three times so we will see there is a three times from the three times three ways three three ways not way at times okay three possibilities you can say possibilities are ways okay so three ways what is the three ways three ways uh, of get transaction data uh, transaction state to end process so what are all the three ways first thing is if there is a should stop 
right swap equal to true if anyone click on the switch stop then it will go to the then block and the then block so there is a transaction item equal to nothing then if the transaction item equal to nothing it will go here that is the first thing second thing second thing while 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 calling get transaction data dot xaml inside the inside the xaml or anything any place okay if it is a, having the exception exception it will go to the catch block the catch block so we have a transaction item trans transaction item is equal to nothing so then this is the second way even though should stop is a false so it will go and it will call while it is getting the uh, thing so it will go to the exception and uh, this is the second way second way again it will go to the end process the third way is suppose get transaction data in the get transaction data so what is there in the get transaction data get transaction that is a uh, here transaction action data data dot xaml inside this inside this xamls the code is like this okay the code is like this first initially they will assign the transaction item equal to nothing okay and they will get the transaction get transaction item so if there is no they will check the get transaction item is suppose get transaction is a nothing that means it will take this one get transaction is something is not nothing take this one take this one everything going going here going here going 16th so after 16th everything is completed all the queue items process is completed there is no data to process understand the 16 records completed there is no new queue item or there is no records to process there is no string to process okay that time the get transaction if even though if you call the get transaction data the transaction item is equal to nothing only okay so what is the next uh, third one if there is no data no data to process no data means no transaction no more transactions empty all the transactions are completed okay no more transactions got it this is the three ways three 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 possibilities from get transaction to the end process any questions here uh, up to this point yes Sudhir. Uh, Any, yeah yeah tell me yeah actually yesterday you remember one data the one cell is empty we did that empty right so we wrote the code to run the bot right so can't hmm. we do here another like without uh, kill the process should we do any option here see so what we are saying is you can do not your problem okay so we are not doing anything here we're just understanding someone else code okay so if you want to do you can connect, reconnect this one okay you can introduce one more state here that is not a problem you can do whatever you want so okay so yesterday you said so we connected uh, the get transaction state full full new record right to the same transaction and uh, take the business exception the, that's why by using that only we can skip that uh, empty right empty row yeah yeah got yeah. it yeah okay we can we can do not a problem we can do we, you can change anything okay you can okay. change the remove the end process you can change the get process remove the get process directly start to end anything you can do okay but what we are doing we're just understanding the existing uh, code if you understand okay. the existing code you can change easily based on your experiment okay i got it it's not there but we can do whatever we want uh, later on okay we can it. we can do it. anything we can do okay but oh. before that if you want to do so that's what so you're starting a tool tool to to use that it is an electronic circuit kind of thing okay if you know how the circuit works you can easily change and do the miracles if you don't know a circuit will out happen okay so it will blast kind of thing right so re framework is also like that okay if you okay. don't know how the flow what is what connection is there if you just simply remove the connection connect to the another thing it may go to the infinity loop or do something else okay okay got it don't got have, it. but yeah yeah, yeah. And, so, and, uh, yeah, and one more thing is, uh, yeah. Okay, you explained, yeah. you explained it. 
stop equal to true when it will become true which one should stop when the should stop will become true some someone click true the should stop should become true when the when anyone click on the uh, hmm. stop button from the orchestrator oh from the orchestrator okay uh, this is a simple activity should stop is a single activity the properties of the should stop activity is a single property that is a, that will return the boolean value okay you don't need to write any code you just uh, take the variable for that output output uh, boolean variable and use that variable if the should stop is equal to true uh, then go on this way and should stop equal to false to go and take the new value okay so when uh, your question is uh, when the should stop will be true when anyone true, while yeah. running the bot while running okay. the bot if anyone go to the orchestrator and kill the job okay, stop the job not kill the job stop the job then they should stop will listen and should stop uh, will understand there is a stop button clicked on the uh, orchestrator so yeah, then it will become the true okay got it, got it but can, can you show the get transaction data that xml have some code you explained in notepad right can you show that one again that some code transaction item equal to I nothing I will explain all the codes of each and every set trans okay. uh, init all settings init get transaction okay, everything. Okay. okay. Once you understand okay. the theory, we will go to the practical. Mm. I will show you. Mm. Okay. Each okay, and every okay. exam and how it looks like. Okay. okay. So I want okay. you to understand the concept first of all. Theory okay. concept. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. 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 Let's go to the next uh, state that is uh, called the uh, final state, the process state. Okay. The process state. Process state. So this process state. Okay, this process state. So when it will go to the process state from the uh, get transaction state, when it will go to the process state. So the, here the transaction is. So it's a. We will make that as a green and uh, this is like a if transaction so can you tell can you tell in the chat window so when it will go to the trans uh, process state from the get transaction state transaction the opposite of that uh, another underline right transaction is not not nothing okay not nothing something is there in the transaction right got it if the something is there so first get transaction data it picks this one first first record that means transaction get uh, transaction item is something a new transaction right transaction item is something the transaction item is not nothing that means the transaction item has uh, some values okay some values then okay. here also there is a after 30th location then automatically go to end of the snow suppose we have excel data yeah 12 records is there uh, after 12th record it's automatically go to end process transaction item is nothing yes. then automatically go to end process yes. then how to go to transaction process. is not nothing why we have to go to the process state so if you if you completed this one 18th record there is nothing so it will go to the end process why we not we have to come to the end process again And what is your question to now? The can you explain again? That means uh, after the 18th record, then automatically go to transaction state or end process state. Okay. End process state. Already yeah, getting the transaction data. Data. Okay, already getting data from the suppose Excel sheet. So uh, after uh, 18th card, then go to transaction state. Or the process state, not transaction. Huh? Hello. After 18th, it will go to end process. Okay. Then only go to process state again. Loop will be continue to. No, 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 no. See, already here we got the possibilities. 
see so if there is no data that mean 18th record does not have a data see so from the get transaction there is no process a process it won't go to the process state okay that is not so all thing is dealing with the get transaction data only get transaction state only okay, it will go to the end process there is no no more data it will go to the end process it won't come to the uh, process state there is no connection between the process and end process one thing you have to understand there is no uh, normally we are thinking like any initialization get process and end process and uh, process state and end process okay there is no connection between the process state and end process there is only connection uh, two connections from one is from the init state another one is from the get transaction state got it okay the last record 18th record is not there that is dealing by the get transaction state not the process if any new record is there it will come to the get process state otherwise it won't go come to the process state you go to the end process from from the get transaction state itself okay when the process state will execute if any new record is there if there is no records uh, to process if the transaction item is or nothing it will go to the end process from get transaction state directly understand trenath oh, okay so thank you okay 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 Okay, if the transaction uh, item, the transaction item basically here. Okay, here is a transaction item is not nothing. Okay, is not nothing. This is a transaction item. Is not not nothing. If it is not nothing, then it will go to the process state. That means some transaction item is there. Okay, How, who is dealing with who is uh, taking care of uh, whether the transactions are completed or not? Single trans uh, transaction is there. These things and all process transaction state. Process state is not bothered about that. Okay, process state is a just no single transaction. Process state does not know how many transactions are there, how many transactions we process, or how many transactions has to process. These things and all not bother. The, the process state knows only single record. Single record. What we have to do with the single record? That is that is the process state knows. Okay. So here again, there is a try and catch. Try and catch. Try in the try block. First thing is the first thing is a business exception. Okay. Exception. Okay. Equal to nothing. There is another variable called business exception. Okay, business rule exception. Business rule exception. Okay, or business exception. You can call it as so you can see in the code. Okay, business exception. So this is another variable that is also exception type. First one, a system exception is an exception type, and the business exception is also one variable that is a business rule exception type. Okay, so in the process we are just making that as a nothing. Okay, so here in each state we are making that as a nothing in the system error, right? In the same way, business exception or business error act, uh, variable is there. That is we are making as a nothing. And immediately there is another with process dot xaml. That's it. Okay, process dot xaml will call. So uh, what is another another xaml we have? Process dot XML, okay in the process dot xml okay so you have to write the code okay we have to we have to write a code action code or write code uh, for a single single transaction item okay item the variables are like a in underscore transaction item and uh, in underscore config. Okay, if you have a this other uh, arguments, basically the arguments for this uh, uh, code is so in underscore transaction item. This in underscore transaction item represents single record, single record. Okay, any single record, any single record. Okay. And uh, in config has a already it has a, all the data, right? Excel has a, all the information. Okay, this process that XAML has any code? It does not have any code. It is an empty. You have to write. We have to write the code for that. Next one. So if the if the process transaction state is completed, uh, the the this is a cache block. In the cache block, there is a system exception. 
exception uh, in the system exception you, you you can fill like a system error is equal to exception okay exception or another thing is a business rule exception here we are filling the business exception equal to exception okay got it there's a two things okay there's a two things so in the cash block there is a two types of cash blocks one is a one second Yeah, there is a two things. One is a system exception uh, type catch. There is a two catch blocks. One is a system exception, system not exception. So in the catch box, system and not exception catch block, we are just assigning the system error equal to exception. And then the another catch block is a business rule exception catch block. So in the business rule catch block, catch block we are assigning the business rule exception. So we are filling that uh, this one and this one. Okay. So here the finally block finally block in the finally block there is a set transaction status or xaml okay another example is there set transaction xaml so where is the set transaction xaml in the process state finally block okay in the process state finally block there is a set transaction status xaml is there the another another example is called another xaml set transaction uh, status dot xml okay so what is there in this inside this code inside this the, the, the code or inside this one is uh, setting the transaction status setting setting the transaction statuses so basically the queue items we are just setting the transaction status right success fail if it's a fail what is a business exception there is a three blocks inside that there is a success and business exception and system exception Okay. There is a three blocks. So basically, what is the purpose of the set transaction status dot XAML? The set transaction status dot XAML. Uh, the purpose is so we are setting whether the current transaction item is a success or fail. If it is a fail, whether it is a business rule exception or system exception, and what is the reason? This type of code and all there in the set transaction status dot XAML okay if you want to write so by default the q item is there a by default q right so it will check it will take automatically okay it will set automatically set the uh, success it will set automatically so which activity by using the which activity we can set the transaction status by using the set transaction status right that is the activity in the queue so the, they already have the code so so again this already have the code for this one okay no need to change this one set transaction status also having the code okay this has the code set transaction status so what type of code is there it will check and it will check the transaction status if the uh, success and uh, it will just uh, uh, basically success means what how, how it will decide that it is a success if there is no business exceptions if there is no system exception that is mean of success it is a success right Business business exception is nothing, right? The business exception is nothing. System exception is also nothing. That is a success. How can it say that is a system exception? If system exception is not nothing, that is called system exception. If how to how would say the business exception? If the business exception is not nothing. That is called business exception. exception is not nothing that is a yeah, business exception here okay here okay there is a business exception system exception basically what type of code is there in the inside the set transaction status the code of setting the transaction status 
okay if you by default it is a queue if you want to change to suppose for example here in the excel i want to make the status okay there is a okay or not error or business exception or okay success like that so if you want to update this type of thing for each and every record so where we have to write this type of code setting the statuses we have to write the code in the set transaction status only okay and I'll not only that so it will has uh, another thing called retry also so it will just uh, a retry mechanism is also there in the set transaction state the incrementing the retry not only that retry incrementing the in and the scale and the, the transaction number is there okay there is a transaction number is one variable the transaction number is also one variable so basically this transaction number so this is not used for the queues okay this is used for the uh, data tables okay if you are dealing with the data tables the transaction number by default it is one variable is there so you can use that transaction number variable the increment in the transaction number by default it is one if you want to increment by one uh, those code and all it is there already there so we don't need to write the code it's already there in the set transaction status incrementing the transaction number by one okay and retry mechanism everything is there in the inside the uh, transaction number okay and the first record is success just imagine first record is success first record is done okay suppose first record is done so it will go to the next step first record is done in the process first record is done in the process if there is no exceptions there it will go so the connection is like from the process state it will go to the get transaction state because why it will go to the so the duty the duty of the process state is process the process that and process the current record current transaction data and uh, connect to the get transaction state okay so the get how, how, what is the, the what is this connection the condition for this connection that is a success success means what success means this is a success that mean what is what what, what is that mean that is a uh, i can say no business no system exception uh, and no business exception okay nothing and system exception is equal to nothing okay this is a success got it here is a success that mean no business exceptions no system exception Got it? No business exception, no system exception. That is called success. Got it? If there is no business exception occurred in the process state, if, and if there is no system exception occurred in the process state, that means this process dot XAML executed properly, at that time it will go to the get transaction state. Okay. Now tell me. Uh, if any system exception occurred in the init state, where it will go? Uh, all the people has to participate, ping in the chart window. So if there is a system exception occurred in the init state, what is the next immediate state? Everyone has to participate. N process, N process. Everyone, what about others? N process. Okay, if, if, they, if the... Uh, while it is retrieving the get transactions data, so if there is an exception occurred in the get transaction state. Okay, while it is retrieving the get transaction data, uh, there is an exception occurred in the get transaction state. So where it will go from the get transaction state? What is the next state? Next state. So end process. End process. Perfect. Okay, because it will go to the cash block and transaction item is called nothing. It will go to the end process. Okay, if there is any exception occurred uh, in the uh end process that means end process close all applications while it is closing the applications there is a, some exception occur where it will go inside the inside the end process what is the next step it will go to the close cache block and the cache block has a kill all processes perfect so if there is no exceptions occurred in the get transaction state so there is no data where it will go there is no data to process where it will go 
if there is no exception occurred in the get transaction state but there is no data to process and process okay okay if there is a there is a uh, in the process state there is no business exception there is no system exceptions where it will go in the process state get in the process state okay get, get transaction state okay no yeah yeah perfect okay get transaction state so if you want to write the login logout mechanism okay so if you want to write the logout uh, kind of thing okay logout the uh, uh, browser and uh, close the browser okay closing the applications uh, this type of code where we have to write which which is the ml we have to write if you want to uh, close log out the application and uh, close the uh, uh, browsers or close the uh, uh, windows uh, this is and all uh, this type of code where we have to write which which is xaml we have to write just in the xaml name kill process is wrong kamesh you are saying kill process kill process is a killing the process i am just asking you about the log out properly close the application this is and all close all close all applications perfect okay close all applications close all applications is a xaml understand come sure okay okay perfect so uh, if you want to set the transaction status so to the success okay where, where it will write as i mean where, where is the code for that setting the transaction current transaction uh, status to the, to the success which xaml which xaml has a xaml full name if you write the xaml full name that is a good it's not process okay in the process state now ask me in the process state if you if the process uh, if you want to set the current process status success or fail or business exceptions which xaml which is xaml okay finally block is fine okay in the final block only we are calling the set transaction status so that is a set transaction status right okay now let us try if if the any any while it is a processing basically while it is a processing there is a system exception occurred okay some something like a close the browser something happened where it will go if this is not a system exception let's say take the business exception okay something like a this this person is not like a uh, this id should not be a uh, e okay this is a business exception this id is not a e okay this is the id e okay id should not be a e this is a business exception this is a business exception wherever it is a e is there business exception just business exception business rules okay the business exception occurred the business exception is not nothing so in that case where it will go it will go to the if the business exception for that particular record okay this business exception for this particular fifth record it is a e we are throwing the business exception we are setting the status to the business exceptions failed with the business exception the reason is a uh, should not have a id is e that is a, some reason we wrote in the set transaction status so next uh, it should not stop the process it has to go for the further next process right next item next transaction item so to go to the next transaction item We'll go to the again get transaction state okay so get transaction state what is the condition here the condition is a business exception business exception the condition of this is is business exception is not nothing okay this business exception is not nothing okay got it there is a some business exception occurred it is not success it is a, there is a some business rule exception the pan card is not supplied or anything okay if it is not nothing it not nothing means something is there okay so if we go to the next get transaction state if it is go to the get transaction state so what will happen okay here we will see here we will see uh, this one so first first one first one taken first one taken uh, get transaction status transaction item is equal to first item the first one and this is a, it is making the green because there is no system exception there is no application exceptions uh, okay the process dot xaml work, worked perfectly in the process that mean it is setting to the green and it is going to the next to the get transaction state 
to get the next record the second record so the second record it is also a green because id is not e right id is not re e so the get transaction state uh, process transaction state success again get success get success this this will go up to here this all will go up to here is a green okay green success the success what do, what do you mean by success no business exception no system exception that is called success okay here is a, a business exception is there okay it will go to the if the business exception occur for that that, that record uh, the fifth record the business exception equal to something it will go again the second one the first how many how many ways here we can see this is the first way first way is the second way first way so uh, number one is the success number two is a business exception number two is a business why it is a business exception again connected to the get transaction to get the next record okay if the business exception is uh, making you as a red and uh, let's go to the next record next record it is not e then it is going to the green okay so next record it is a green next record it is a green like that okay got it so like that it will go and uh, uh, continuously uh, updating so while it is updating there is some system exception occurred so something like a browser is closed or browser is hanged and the file is not uh, responding that is a system exception right the system exception occurred system based related exception occurred okay suppose for example while you are dealing with this number this number having the some num some alphabets okay actually it has some mathematical expression this is a system exception will occur okay uh, uh, the given format is not correct right this is a system exception this is a system exception imagine okay the ninth record is a system exception because that is a that value actually values a uh, that is given by the, the number but uh, by default while it is uh, doing some mathematical calculations it is uh, throwing the exception okay business exception is a this should be a e this should not be a e that is a condition but uh, or, or, or another thing is so while you are feeding the information to the website so the browser is closed that is a system based exception so if the system based exception occurred in the process state process state this will go to the again in its state so why it is in its state so you should be clear about the why it is going to the end state okay so why it is in its state okay if the browser is closed suppose so, so suppose in this place suppose just imagine this place the browser is closed okay browser is not responding if you try for the 10th also browser is closed browser is not responding again it will go and this is exception again it is exception right because the browser is a hanged every record it will fail right every record it will fail that's why what we have to do we we will if you if you go to the uh in its state if the system exception occurred in in the in the any transaction so if you go to the init state in state so this is a third way third possibility third way that is a system this here is a thing is a uh, system exception system error is uh, not nothing okay not nothing is not nothing if the system error is not nothing and this will go to the uh, init state so let's imagine we where we are now where the flow is now okay where which state we are now in the init, init state so the system error occurred where in the init state in the init state just imagine again from from the starting Okay, from the starting system error is nothing. We are assigning the system error equal to nothing. If the config is nothing, if in in the second time we are going to the init state, is config is nothing here or not nothing? Just in the chat window, config is nothing. Config dictionary is nothing or not nothing? Others, others. Uh, so. So we can fill again the Excel, right? But why we have to fill again? So if you fill again from the Excel uh, config Excel also, that is no use, right? It's already filled. Why you have to? Why we have to fill, right? It is a not nothing. Perfect. Okay. It is a not nothing. 
others also has to participate all all the members has to participate in the chart window okay so that's why it is saying if config is nothing then only this uh, init all settings and fill process do okay otherwise so what will what it will do it will go to the init all applications it will just open the applications freshly and uh, uh, go to the get transaction state and it will get the next item this item okay freshly the 10th item it will take and it will go to the process state if it is a success again it will just uh, uh, actually go go for the green again it will go for the green like this yeah someone is speaking hello yeah lakshmi here just explain again if config is not nothing if the config is not nothing it won't fill the init all settings again okay basically init all settings is uh, getting the data from the config dot xlsx to the config dictionary right the config dictionary is already filled why we have to fill again okay so we are not filling the again the config dictionary and going at the uh, initialize the applications uh, freshly open the applications freshly and go to the get transaction state and it is checking the should stop if the should stop is not true go to the false uh, okay uh, again take the get transaction data it will get the new transaction item and go to the transaction process transaction and um, uh, no exceptions go to the uh, success and loop uh, one by one okay so that's it about the uh, actually rd framework uh, RE framework has a how many states now? How many states? Just uh, ping in the chat window. How many states? Hi, Sudhir. Hello. Yeah, yeah, hi. Uh, what is business succession? Simply say, suppose system succession is closing the window, so system type of errors. So, what is business type of errors? Exception. The business has uh, some rules. So, oh, okay. the business has some rules. So, suppose, for example, uh, okay, if the business has uh, some rules, the business has uh, some rules means the business has uh, rules like a. Sudhir, we can't see the screen. Okay, if the, if the business has some rules means uh, the business has a. Uh, suppose here I'm saying that so this ID should not be a E. Okay, that is my requirement. Okay, if it is a E, just don't process for that. Okay, like that. So, so to morning we have a one uh, customer details. So the business rule is like a business standard rules are there here. So salary should be greater than 30. That is the business rule. Then only approve, otherwise rejected. Okay. Or the, the pan card is mandatory. If the pan card is not uh, uh, not supplied, don't go for the process. The process is see approval process is like a just imagine this approval process is it has to open the bank website and feed the information of the customer and go uh, for uh, some checks and go again to the share point open the share point enter the one more record and approve this is one if, if that is our own process for the, some each customer if the initially were checking the packet the path card is not supplied for that customer don't go the uh, don't don't start the process for that particular uh, customer okay throw the business exception that is a business exception okay Business exception means business has their standard rules. That that rules is uh, uh, violated. Hello, Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you have to write code using some condition. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. sure. Got it. Okay. So uh, when when we discussed yesterday evening, I think yesterday evening we discussed about the throw right throw activity. By using the throw activity, we will throw the business exception. Okay, if condition, if we will check if the other card is empty, just throw the exception. Okay. 
Got it. Uh, that is uh, yeah. Q item is terminated due to some exception. So it comes hmm. uh, where it will come. It come to transaction data and goes to catch transaction item equal to nothing, right? Then go to end hmm. process. Nothing. Nothing. Yes, yes. Is yeah. Correct. Correct, correct. End process. Okay. If the, okay. if the get transaction data while it is getting the transaction data, uh, if you, if you get any exceptions, so okay, sometimes the orchestrator will uh, disconnect, right? If it is disconnected, uh, mm. then it will go to the end process. It will stop. It won't process further. Okay. okay. That is here we explain. We, we discussed here, right? There is a three ways. In these three three ways, I think this is a, a second part. Okay, while calling the get transaction data exception occurred, it will go to the cache block yeah. and the transaction okay. is nothing, then it will go to the end process. Okay. Uh, Suti? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, are you going to share the things, the, um, the word as uh, a notepad and a uh, This is a paint. You can take the picture. Okay. You yeah. Just, just give me one second. Here. I'm I'm going to snip all the things. Can you please uh, put one by one? Uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Please uh, uh, take a snip picture. Otherwise, uh, uh, yeah. So take 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 the picture. Okay. One by one. Yeah, I'm done with this. Second. <laughs> Otherwise. And one second, one second. So apart from this, there is another uh, XAMLs also there. Get app credentials or XAML is also there. Okay. So uh, here, here. So if you want to uh, uh, getting the app credentials, application credentials in the sense, if you are logging into the Facebook, so you are keeping the username and password in the asset or Windows credential. Okay, those things are all you are just writing here. Uh, the inputs of the get app credentials are simple. If you give the asset name, it will give the username and password. That's it. Okay. If you give the if you give the uh, credential asset name, name is the input in, and this will give the output uh, outputs are user name and password. Username password. The password is a, a secure string and the username is a string. This is a string, string uh, type, and this is a password is a secure string. Okay, this has a, this has a mechanism. So if you want to get the any uh, username and password for the, your application, that kind of code, if you want to write, you can co write in the get app credentials. By default, this has a, some code uh, to to get the uh, app credentials. It's ha having the code. Single single activity is there, but it is already having the code. So if you want to modify, you can modify. And what is the other things? Uh, okay. So uh, just take a picture. Okay. Give me one second. Just take a picture, all of you. Hello, yeah, okay. So uh, you take it right. So if you want to take this one, so I'm just pinging this one whole thing in the chart window. Okay, I will ping this one in the chart window. You just copy uh, to your local. Okay, and otherwise, I think uh, okay. Mm. Do you have any doubts? <clears throat> um, 
ask Hughes. Q and Y, ask Q and Y. I I'm just uh, uh, give you, uh, feeding your names just to ask the questions, okay? To ask the questions, I'm just giving uh, your names. Chana, okay. Next one is uh, Lakshmi, okay. Ashwin, Kamesh. These are all the string variables. Kamesh and Mani, Prasad, Swarna, Swarna, Trinath. Okay. Uh, I think those Anu left. Okay. Savanti also left, I think. Okay. So what is the issue here? Here there is some issue just observe. So do, 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 do. is any brackets? Mm -hmm. I think it's there. So here we have to make that as an array of strings. Okay, how many people? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, right? Seven. So now uh, we will just give them some message box. So I, I will ask the questions. Okay, you you have to answer. So who has to answer? Robot will decide. Okay. Next of zero comma seven. Okay, zero comma seven. Zero comma one zero one two three four five six zero two six. The robot will tell the uh, uh, okay this thing. And we will ask the answer. Uh, okay. So the question is like a. The question is like a. So we will ask the questions, and uh, we will keep in the while loop. Okay. So so that it will continuously uh, update. Okay. So while loop in the. I'm just giving the true. Okay. It will continuously loop. So first question to which person? Money. Money. First question to money. So. <laughs> Where do I have to write the code to uh, kill any process? So suppose I I want to kill the Excel process, right? So where I have to keep that type of code? Money, money has to answer. Will that be in money? Uh, close all applications? No, 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 no. So so I'm just talking about the kill the Excel, kill the Chrome, right? So it is a kill all processes, okay? So if you if understand, close all applications is a closing log out this things and all. If you want to write the kill, kill all processes. Got it, money? Others also, if you just have the confusion on that particular question, just uh, uh, understand the answers. So I will correct you. Know, this is a lie. This is not like a judgment. Okay, it's like a discussion and learning more from others. Okay. Money, you understand, right? We are writing the code for killing the processes, any up any processes in the kill all processes dot xaml like in the init state, okay. right? Yeah. Got it? What is the for the next question? The person again it money. Okay, Lakshmi. Okay. So what are all the sheet names in the config dot xaml? Uh, XLSX. So there is a config Excel is there, right? There is a config Excel. Uh, how many sheets are there? What are the sheets? How many sheets are there? What are all the sheets? There are three sheets. Lakshmi, madam. Ah. Yeah, I'm only talking. Uh, there are three sheets. It has three sheets. Uh, setting, constant, constants, and assets. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. Archana. Next question to the Archana. So, if there is a uh, business exception occurred, so in the process state, okay, where, what is the next state? Uh, it would be good transaction state. Okay. Okay. Good. Next question to the Swarna. So, if there is a, any exception occurred in the try block inside the end process, what is the what will happen? Okay. While closing the applications in the end process, if there is any exceptions, what will happen? Where it will go? It goes to the catch block and kill all the processes. Okay. Okay. Perfect. 
perfect so next one is also a uh, swarna and uh, suppose if you want to get the uh, that mean uh, orchestrator credentials okay if you want to get the orchestrator credentials you store it in the orchestrator if you want to get the orchestrator credentials where we have to write that type of code uh, get app credentials xaml yeah perfect get app credentials lakshmi next is the lakshmi so if there is a, any system exception occurred in the get transaction state what is the next state lakshmi if there is any system exception occurred in the get transaction state uh, system exception in the sense any exception occurred in the get transaction state what is the next state uh, actually any issue okay go to end process go to end process okay in the fourth block here get transaction data is in the cache block if any occurred, it will go to the exception cache block and, and the cache block is the transaction item. nothing it will go to the end nothing. process perfect okay. end process. correct Perfect. Perfect. Okay, again the question to you only. So if anyone clicked on the stop button, okay, stop, stop button from the orchestrator. So where it will go from the get transaction stop state? Become true. Stop become true. The transaction item is nothing, so it go to end process. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So so how many uh, money? How many? Uh, transactions are the transitions not transactions transitions means connection between the state and state okay so how many transactions are there for the process state for the process money okay how many transitions are there for the process state basically the transition means outgoing connections for that particular state how many transactions are there uh, three three what is what is that three uh there would be three one is success business exception that's it so, three only there is no success business exception system exception got it right from the st uh, process states where it will go three states right yeah. Okay, Achana. Okay. Mm. So while while okay, so so can we use the RE framework without using the queues? Uh, yes, we can use the RE framework. Okay. How can we use? How can we use uh, without well, using the queues? Well, I would say it is a transaction item for which could be changed to data role here using the data table. So the transaction item okay. can be mm, can be a data role, can be a string in the collection, can be yeah. a dictionary in the collection, right? Okay, perfect, uh, perfect. So okay, Prasad. So what is the default data type for the transaction item variable in the RE framework? So what is the default data type for the transaction item variable? Q item. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. So, so this okay. is I have so, doubt. I have doubt. I have doubt that yeah. just before you ask question to Archana regarding Q item. Can you ask the question again? Hmm. So can we use the RE framework without using the queues? Okay. So what what's the answer? So yes, default RE framework. It is a answer is a yes. So we can use instead of Q item, so we can use the in that place. So we can use a data row that basically the transaction item is a Q item, right? In the transaction item, you can use a data row. You can make that as a string. You can make it as a integer from the collection, right? You can use. Basically, the standard answer is a yes. We can use a data row. That's it. You don't need to tell the okay. string and integer. Okay. Okay. Ken, yes. Thanks. We can use. But we can instead of queues, we can use a data row as a transaction item. That's it. Okay. Okay. Now uh, the so there I is, had a question uh, on that. Uh, yeah. In real time, uh, what I mean, one hmm. you've used queues and uh, data rows, right? Like, is there anything that you've used in real time as transaction item? Real time, yeah. So sometimes the people use the strings also then from the collection. I said that. So from suppose, for example, imagine. There is a folder 
every day the bulk of files will come to the folder okay the file path is our string got it okay. the file path is okay. on string yeah. from the collection okay. use a dictionary dot get uh, 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 get files so you give the, all the file string uh, string array each file is a file path is one string you can keep that into the queue item or some people they don't have a queue facility they can keep into the uh, string collection okay now the transaction item is a string okay got it okay one of one of the uh, many times it is like a data draw and queue item that's it many times 80 percent of the projects okay very rarely i saw and the, the old projects my old projects so somewhere i saw that uh, I, there is a dictionary see there is a this is a good question so we'll explain okay. there is a list of dictionary of string comma string this is a list this is a list okay this is a basically a one dictionary list each dictionary is a each dictionary is a one q uh, transaction item this list has a maybe a 10 dictionaries dictionary items suppose the dictionary this is a individual thing is a one transaction array now that what is the transaction item the transaction item is a dictionary variable okay string comma string they are calling like a they are making that like a this this one is a this one uh, suppose uh, here uh, suppose customer customer is one dictionary customer of uh, uh, customer dict dict is one dictionary customer of customer name equal to equal to rajesh okay so customer dict of customer name not as our customer name is a basic salary basic basic salary this is a very rarely i saw somewhere okay uh, so th this is one dictionary so that means one single item this single item is one dictionary tomorrow next this one and this one this is a keys the above is a keys that is a below in the values that is one item okay one item again this and this that is one item key and value one this one this one so okay form 16 yes that is a value key value space okay this is a tra the one transaction it is one dictionary is a one record okay this has a list understand so you can have any anything sorry like is it in the design phase or you you de i mean uh, you decide on the transaction item is it in the design phase yeah so design phase is why in the development phase only you are deciding the transaction item so okay that is a developer Headache. So they can so uh, design pay design are uh, uh, the developer only can decide based on the facility. If they have a client has orchestrator, they can go with the queue item. Client does not have orchestrator, they can go with the row, data row. Got it? Let us take here RE framework. So robotic enterprise framework to make the RE framework. Just go to the RE framework. Just take the RE framework here. REF let's just make the one name okay so once you uh, make that so see here one small thing is one small thing is here the small change is this process transaction status this is not inside the framework okay this is outside okay these are outside the framework the transaction and one more thing is a main main not XAML. Okay. This main dot XAML has a the whole this this having the state mission. The main dot XAML has the state mission. Okay. Inside this main dot XAML, this is a main dot XAML. So I can say this whole thing is a main dot XAML. Okay. Got it? This is a structure. So process is outside, main is outside, and remaining things are in the framework, and something is in the config. So let us take so if we take the uh, this one. Can you show the notepad? I never take, I never snipe it. I think you never show this notepad. notepad. Yeah, notepad items. Yeah, just zoom, just this, maximum. This notepad, I copied into the chart window. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I, I copied okay. into the chart window. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, thanks. You proceed. Now, see, 
now see here there is a init state so this is a real time uh you framework okay up to now you see saw that uh, what is the theory okay there is a init state if you go to the init state again so there is a system error equal to nothing in the system error equal to nothing after that there is a if condition config is nothing the config every variable is here the config is a dictionary they already build that the uh, business role exception is there system error is the exception transaction it is a queue item they already uh, have all the variables okay system error is equal to nothing and we're checking if the config is nothing then go to the then block and call the init all settings that's what we discussed here right so if the config is nothing then it will call the init all settings that's it will call the init all settings and it will kill the process okay okay so the system error is nothing right in it where in the init state okay in state it has the c init state has the the state has the entry block exit block and transitions we have a two transitions in the entry block there is a code in the entry block again there is a uh, try block and catch block so i said every state is uh, having the exception handling this try block and catch block if the catch has what is the, there in the catch in the, in the finally nothing is there in the catch block system error equal to this exception okay in the try block if you go here if the system error is equal to they, they are just assigning the system error equal to nothing initially and uh, Mm -hmm. So why? Because it is a, it, we we are, have to assign the nothing. Suppose, for example, in this case, the, there is no system error. Go here, and uh, the third part it will go having the system error. If you don't specify system error equal to nothing, every time the system error is a so it will come to the system error here, and the system error is something. It will go and end process. It, it won't it won't process for the for the uh, records. That's why we have to keep the system error equal to nothing. Then config equal to is nothing. The config initially it is a nothing only. Config is a dictionary. The config is nothing. We are just calling the init all settings. The init all settings has already code. So the code is there is a parameters like a two input parameters. There is a where is the config dictionary that the Excel. Okay, go to the projects. The projects if you see is the data framework. The framework has a close all applications get operations get transaction data i need all settings you need all applications you need all settings kill all processes set transaction uh, status these are all there right so go to the data right click on this okay or uh, uh, open this has the config excel open this excel config excel it has a three sheets settings constants and assets the settings you have a name and value that is a key and value and so what is the settings like here what is the name of the process and what is a queue name these things and all you have to mention the settings and the constants so you can mention like a so url uh, or error email e e email true address error email subject subject or okay these things and all if you want to change the subject tomorrow you don't need to go to the code you can change the subject or body here itself okay in the body you mention something so tomorrow the business users come and say so no 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 comma is not uh, here you just put the comma somewhere else so no need to touch the code we can just simply uh, modify the excel itself that is a that is a use of the config excels okay constants and settings and assets uh, so constants also there is a, some default constants are there so they already use these constants if you want to use the constants like a delay medium delay low delay short if you, if you can use these values okay so while you are using the delay activity timeout option is there right in the any activity timeout option is there by default 30 seconds it will, it will wait suppose if you want to make the timeout the delay medium the 15 seconds delay delay long 60 seconds so why you have to use this one if you use the in all, all over the project whole project so if, if you use a many activities you use this delay long tomorrow the business user tell no 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 it's not 60 uh, thousand milliseconds it is like a you have to wait at least two two minutes uh one lakh twenty thousand milliseconds so if you just say if if you hard code in all the activities you have to change in each and every activity go to the code select the activity go to the properties change 60 to 120 Okay, go to the again the another activity change. So if you keep the in one place, these are simple actions 120, 
you're just changing gear itself. So it will affect to the other project. That is the biggest advantage of the config pan. Okay. Assets has asset values, the asset name and uh, a key name and asset name. So this will go and take the value from the orchestrator and fill the uh, value for that particular key. So basically, you can have a one small tricky tip tip is like a uh, you can have a spaces. Okay, you can have a spaces. Any any spaces, not a problem in the settings or constants, but the assets should not have a spaces. Suppose name equal to name. Okay, URL equal to URL, and uh, okay, so um, ID equal to ID. So if you give give the space, it will throw the exception. Okay, you have to take care of the spaces. Don't give the spaces inside the assets. Okay, how it is reading the config? We are just giving the config path and the sheets names. We didn't you give the asset sheet name here, right? So did you observe? We gave only settings and constants. You can have any number of uh, sheets. They gave the three sheets. So if you if you want to keep uh, HR related kind of things in the HR HR key value pairs in the HR sheet, you can have you can you can change. Not a problem. Okay, you can create another sheet HR and key value pair. You can give like here. Uh, here, no need to uh, do the rework HR sheet. Okay, this will read the HR sheet also. It will fill the, all the HR uh, sheet related uh, examples, so that means Excel uh, username and password uh, to the sorry, uh, name and value from this. Suppose if you give the HR here, HR. So again, you have to follow the same structure name and value the name is a HR uh, uh, site URL. Okay, no level dot HR.com something like that. Okay, if you keep this kind of thing, so you have to mention this uh, sheet name here. Okay, if you mention sheet name here, it automatically is because they already written the code. You don't need to write the code separately for the HR sheet. Okay, you just pass the sheet name. It will go and uh, uh, do the hedges. So what is output here? Output is a config is output that is a dictionary type that will fill the config. So so before this calling, let's go to the the XAML. Let's go to the XAML. So what it will do is it will assign the out dictionary equal to new. This is object uh, creation. After that, in in uh, config sheets, that is a way of giving the settings comma constants comma hr comma right. So those sheet names, this is a string variable. Sheet names it will loop each and every sheet, and while it is reading. It's a type sheet. So this is a sheet. This sheet means first it is a settings for the next it is a constant and it is a uh, HR like that. Okay, this will read and this will uh, uh, Store it to the config table this config table uh, in this row row represents single row in the that particular Excel. Okay, so the row of name is uh, Not nothing that mean uh, if any empty spaces are there empty lines are there it will ignore Okay, if there is no empty row then this will assign the values config dictionary of key. Key is the first row, right? So first column. First column is a name, and next column is a value. Row of value means it will go come the second column value. Okay, that's it about this uh, uh, constants and the settings. And assets by default they hard coded the asset asset uh, sheet name. Okay, they they that's why we don't need to pass the asset uh, um, sheet name from the outside. Okay, so what is assets? Assets uh, again they read the assets assets data table is there and assets data table to read one by one asset uh, using the get asset activity they are just giving the assets asset is the second column right name is the first column asset is a second column in the row of that asset this will be the value from the orchestrator asset okay that value they are storing here for that corresponding name that is a ql basically so at the end of this whole workflow the config will fill okay config will fill this outside the config dictionary it is in the memory that's what here we discussed right it is in the ram memory physical std config got it that is in the memory now so once we uh, uh so they forget about this one so this basically the uh, they, they didn't uh, they mentioned so basically it is uh, like uh, we're not using so no one will use this one so basically, so you can pass the orchestrator name from uh, orchestrator queue name from the uh, or, orchestrator job while running the job. You can give the orchestrator uh, a queue name. 
so if it's not orchestrated if they don't don't give they will fill the config uh, orchestrator here itself okay from the excel it will take the orchestrator uh, queue name that's it okay the next thing is uh, ignore this one so the next thing is a kill all process in the kill all process as we said there is nothing there is no code only one single log is there that's kill all process so you have to write the code of that uh, there is a kill all processes so there's a suppose for kill process uh, you have to your if you your process is interacting with uh, uh process like excel just give the excel if the if the your process is uh interact with the another thing like a chrome chrome okay okay kill all processes kill all processes does not have a code okay that's it so it's uh, just uh, some log business log uh to the orchestrator next one is uh, this is a if condition this is a if condition it will run only once because the first time only config is a uh, nothing Next step, it won't work. Okay. Next one is the init all applications. As we said, the init all applications have the code. Init all applications does not have a code, right? So the, wherever it is, there is no dot, green dot. That is that does not have a code. Go to the init all applications. Init all applications. Here, there's no code. Only log message. If you have to write the code, so what type of code we have to write here? We have to write the code like a opening the application, logging the process, applications. This type of code we have to write here in the applications. And once this is done, in it all applications, so, so there's that's it. The drive block is done. Okay, system error equal to nothing. And uh, these things are all we have to keep in mind. So in, in the if condition, in all applications, kill all processes, and in all applications. So once this is done, there's a two ways. One is a system error and success. What is the system error? Go to here. System error is nothing, then it will go to the get transaction state. The system error is not nothing, then it will go to the end process. Got it? So as these two are combining, so if I just go here, so you can see in the single page, so so many things don't uh, get confused here. So because as it see, so init destination again init destination. So don't get confused here because as these two are combining these connections. We just move here like this separate it separate it okay okay if you separate it we go here simply the tri tr uh, trigger block condition block has a system error is not nothing and it will go to the end process the system error is not nothing. system error has something okay if it is a system success the system error is nothing that means everything is working fine worker work fine executed properly in the name the block then it will go to the get transaction state in the get transaction state uh, in the end, end process get to go to the end process end process what is yeah yeah in the init state yeah. like if you have more than one config file so should there be only one sheet config file? not about sheets maybe. sheets or uh, okay multiple config files Yes. Why we need multiple config files? Uh, so just so in this case is a basically a configuration details. Okay. See, first thing why we have to use a configuration. This is a basically a configuration details so you can have any number of configurations. Just go to the end. So how many configurations you can you can have? So oh n number of thousands thousands okay thousand keys and value pairs you can keep in the okay, same Excel yeah, if you want to it. keep in the multiple multiple Excel so, so see so no one has a uh, one lakh uh, key and value pair right so if you have a one lakh key and value pair definitely you can go into the same different sheets or in the single sheet only you can just use a key and value pair okay single Excel. So if you want to write this uh, different Excel, so I want to store it in the different Excel. So you have to uh, definitely you have to change the code inside the init all settings. Okay, in the init all settings again you have to change the code instead of Excel. So how you are doing the Excel paths? Okay, so you have to write the the type of code like a. So you have to change the logic. So what, from the starting onwards, I am saying that this is a rule. This is a, they they give. So if you want to change, you can change as per your requirement. Okay. So you can change like uh, this one comma so data slash uh, conf one dot xlsx uh, xlsx so you can like this you can view okay 
but if you want to give this should not be a string this should be a string array again again you have to change that uh, the actual uh, purpose of, uh, it's not purpose actual the structure of the init all settings you can change and you can do it it's not a problem okay thank you got it yes yeah, okay. So in the init in the end process, in the end process, what is there? There is only single try block. Inside that there is a one close all applications. Close all applications has a code. There's no code. Okay. Only one log message is there. Close all applications is uh, having the what type of code we have to write them in the close all applications? Log out the process, closing the browser, closing the window, this in this type of uh, code we have to write in the close all applications. In the close all application, they don't have any code. We have to write the code for our own process okay in the key in the end process only one entry in the end process only one entry block this is the end final state final state in the end process we have a try block in the catch block there's a, a kill all processes there's a some log and kill all processes if any exception occurred while it is closing any application then it will go to the catch block and it will kill the process again kill process the same xamarin is called okay so you understand in, in, in it on the uh, end process, right? So let's go to the uh, transactions. When it will go to the transaction, get transaction, the system error is nothing. There is no system exception. Get, let's go to the get transaction state. The get transaction state, the first thing is, so this is the one state, okay? Entry, exit, and transitions. In the entry block, first thing is, what is the first thing here? We mentioned should stop, right? The should stop it will check the should stop the properties of the should stop is like a uh, should stop is a one variable that is a boolean value it will return the boolean when it will return the true once anyone click on the stop button from the orchestrator this will return the true so if it is a true then go the then block and the then block what is there just forget about the logs logs is a you can understand where it is of going okay so logs also they handle everything okay the transaction is equal to nothing. If the transaction is equal to nothing, just see here. And let me separate this one so, so they, you can understand easily. Okay, so this is uh, connected to this one, right? End process. Let's go here. Transaction item is nothing. If the transaction item is nothing, you'll go to the end process. You'll go to the end process. If the should stop is clicked, you'll go then block. And then block we assign the transaction item equal to nothing then it will go to the end process if it is not nothing not stopped okay not stopped it will go to the else block else block again try and catch that's what here i mentioned here in the else block we have a try catch and in the try block there is a get transaction in cache block we have a transaction item equal to nothing let us see try block in the cache block so expand this one in the cache blocks transaction item equal to nothing transaction item equal to nothing if any exception occur in the try block so in the try block get transaction data is there this is a uh, uh, this has a code or not this already have the code the green means code okay this already have the code so let's go to the open application so it is having the get transaction item to get the new transaction item from the queue so this will get the get transaction item and it will fill the the transaction item out transaction item uh, the transaction item is basically a uh, a queue item okay this will fill this will fill and here it is checking the get transaction item is not nothing when it is not nothing when it will be not nothing there is no items to process okay queue is uh, empty there is no new items then it is a uh, transaction item is equal to nothing that is a, that is a, like a third stage mm -hmm. this one yeah. okay if it's nothing, then uh, if it's not nothing, it will go here. If it is nothing, it won't go or do anything. So here also just assigning the some values. It's uh, empty values. Just, uh, but but it will assign the transaction item, right? Transaction item. Here in the variables, as you can see, uh, config, it is going to inside. And transaction number, it is going inside. But we are not doing, uh, they didn't do anything for the, about this transaction number. If you want to move the, Q item process to the data row, then you can use inside that get transaction data. This transaction number, these things are all these things are all not used. Okay, the only use is a config and the get transaction item is output. Yeah, there's a Q item. Okay, 
and the, there's a get transaction data is also there get transaction data is also there that is a basically the get transaction data is a uh, transaction data so basically this is a, a for if any uh, if the transaction item is a data row then the transaction data is a data table okay we're not using anything so only only using this one because it is a queues okay so out of this get transaction if the get transaction data is executed properly there is a queue has items then the transaction item has something okay the transaction item has something okay so let's so go to the end yeah transaction item Tra just explain about transaction item just now you write a variable uh, in that notepad right yeah show me the new variable default variable transaction data, yeah, transaction data. Ah, explain about transaction data transaction data we are not using the transaction data in the queues okay so by default are you come coming with the queues so we're not changing anything if you want to change uh, uh, to the data table then you have to use the transaction data or transaction number these variables okay 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 only transaction item here we are using okay all right give me one second give me one second okay so if there is no data it will go to the end process right if there is a data that means transaction item is not nothing if the transaction item is not nothing then it will go to the process state it will go to the process state in the process what is there again the process state here only business exception equal to nothing and process dot xaml call right see here business exception equal to nothing and process dot xaml so is, is there anything is there in the process dot xaml nothing there is no code in the process dot xaml Okay, the variables are like a in transaction item and a queue item. In transaction item is nothing but a single record. Single record. You can use the in transaction item by using the in transaction item. You can access the single row. That means single row, the in transaction item of basic salary, in transaction item of the PAN card, like that you can access. Got it? Okay, nothing is there in the process. So if anything, so you, where you have to write uh, main code, you have to write the main code in the process. The main, what do you mean by main code? A single transaction, we have to write something, right? So that is a main process, okay? The single transaction, so suppose this customer, you, you have to open the, uh, the SharePoint and feed the information of this customer, and validate the customer, okay? Uh, complete the uh, assigning, assigning the uh, cash amount to this customer, and go to the bank site and uh, these, these are all the work for the single transaction you have to only concentrate on the single transaction if you concentrate on the single transaction so so they any day anyway the loop is already built they build the loop to the all the customers okay so that code is there in the process in the process in the process if you use the throw activity uh, by using the business exception these things and all again you have a two type of exceptions one is the cash block has a system error equal to exception business rule exception has in the business rule exception equal to exception in this process transaction in the final state there is a set transaction state is there in the set transaction state is already already they wrote the set transaction state code so if the success the success means just see the um, uh, see the tooltip the business exception is nothing system exception is nothing okay then you will go to the success block uh, here business rule exception is not nothing that means if you go to the business rule exception it is not it will go to the system exception so inside the code so hold the code that means increasing the transaction number by one and setting the transaction to the success everything they built already okay they are already half uh, prepared okay half prepared okay so we have to use that one set transaction state it will set the transaction state of the uh, okay so here the thing is See, if the success, if there's a success, you'll go to the get transaction data again. If the success means, what is the success? 
system is nothing and the business exception is nothing that is that means that is a success there is a success it will go here if it is business rule exception again it will go here business rule exception means business rule exception is not nothing okay that means some business exception is there and system exception this is a system error exception system error exception is system exception is not nothing that means some system exception is there again the system exception is there that means it will go to the init state the init state again system error equal to nothing and it won't go and execute this if condition because config is nothing here but actually config is something config has the values it won't go in so inside the if condition in the second time then it will open the init or uh, applications and uh, i can go to the get transaction and the get transaction take this new transaction and go to the process and do the process okay got it any questions this is the explanation of the code and if you see the project structure this is of uh, see in the if, if you go to the init uh, get app credentials get app credentials is not used if you want to use it you can use the get app credentials so let me update the credential uh package here uh there is some errors uh, let me update the package here okay get app credential uh, dot xaml is also there in the re framework the get app credentials xaml has the code as we discussed here get app credentials have the three parameters one is a credential name that is an in parameter if you pass the asset credential name uh, asset name uh, it will give the username and password username is a string and password is a uh, oh, let me open again get app credentials there's some um, thing is problem okay so basically it has a uh, it has a uh, oh, what trainer uh, up to now you didn't write any code like uh, real time code so sample task in process just uh, to now? you didn't write any code our own project code like getting excel yeah, yeah. data hello okay so uh, now in this process right you are say asking Oh, yes. in, this. in this process we didn't write single code okay we didn't write so single are, code are all okay for all sorry okay these are so all written by these, them. these are all minimum minimum every program these yeah these are all the steps, common like things for the Generic things, yeah. Generic things for the every program. If you want to change, you can change. So maximum you can. So it will fit for all maximum uh, type of projects. Okay, it will fit for okay. maximum type of projects. They already have the code. Uh, get transaction data you has a code. Does. Okay. Okay. Sorry, Trinal, your voice is breaking. Oh, so network issue. Okay, okay, got it. Okay, okay, okay. So, so here is a process outside. Yeah, yeah, okay. Here's the main main has a project. The process has a nothing, no code is there. Okay, everything is a there. If you go to the folder, these are all the folders. Data folder has a config.xlsx. This folder structure you should have uh, in mind. Okay, so where is the kill all, kill all process is in the framework. Okay, so this is a main process is outside. The data has a config.xaml. That's it about the RE framework. So we will see uh, when we will see when 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 we will uh, fix the next session tomorrow. Whenever you have time, Sudhir. Uh, what about the tomorrow morning six o'clock? Fine with me. Uh, for me, morning is not fine. If you fix on evening time, it's okay. I think there's a question. Uh, the same time, five o'clock or six. Evening seven o'clock. Today. Indian time. Evening seven o'clock. No, 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 not today. So it's a uh, already it's. Uh, sorry, sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. Seven o'clock tomorrow. Tomorrow seven seven p.m. Indian time tomorrow twenty seventh. 
Monday, 7 p.m. That means 9.30 for me. Yeah, I can. For you, 9.30 a.m. Huh? Monday, 7 p.m. Yeah, Monday, 7 p.m. Yes. For me, my 9.30 a.m. Yeah. For me, it's 9.30 p.m. <laughs> so I'll go sleep around 1, 1 p.m. One day it's fine, fletch me. One day it's okay, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so there, okay, can. Okay, tomorrow 7 30, uh, 7, 7 p.m., right? Tomorrow 7 p.m., IST, Monday 7 p.m., IST. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll meet, we'll meet you next time. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Sudhir, uh, also you just include how include throw and re-throw in next session uh, when you show some code, uh, 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 RE framework, uh, show how to include throw and re-throw under business exception. Why we have to use the re-throw? Re-throw we already discussed, right? So why yeah, do yeah, we, we have discussed, to re-throw again? Yeah, yeah. But uh, so no, in no, the RE framework, practically, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Prac uh, actually, you explained yesterday. Because we mm. have to make the business exceptions, mm. we will use a throw. Okay. Mm. So why mm. re-throw? No, no. Just uh, I'm asking yeah, because you explain yeah. it theoretically. You explain, but uh, if if I saw practically, then I can capture. So that only I ask you. You try. If you cannot, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, I will explain. No problem. Okay, I will explain. Okay, money is asking the recordings. Uh, recordings, I'm just keeping uh, into the just check the uh, same folder money. So, I'm just keeping uh, same recordings only last week. Uh, I think Saturday recording money is, is not here. Uh, I think he left. Look like oh, he's here. Okay. Money, yeah. is money is here. Money, you just uh, please check uh, uh, same folder. Yeah, I will do that. Okay, so that. just keep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we we'll just. Okay, thank you very much. So we'll meet uh, tomorrow evening, 7 p.m. IST, Monday. That is Monday, and we will see one small example in a, any other uh, in the queues. Okay, in the queues RA framework. Uh, otherwise, you, uh, okay, queues we will see. Queues already we saw, right? So can we go with the data table or we have to see queues? Okay, we will we will go with the queues as well as the data table. Okay, fine. Okay, bye. See you uh, on tomorrow. Bye. See you. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.